Hello everyone, my name is Hal and this is the third installment in the Dark Table from A to Z series. Today we're going to pick up where we left last time and continue our discussion on Light Table. The first concept we're going to talk about are film roles. Film, film roles are virtual fold, folders used to organize your photos. The name that you can see here is actually the name of the physical folder that you use to import those, those uh, uh, photos from. However, keep in mind that this is not a backup. The f original files are not copied, they're not moved, they, are they stay where they are. If you delete them, then they're gone. And even if you had, if, if they still show up under the virtual uh, folder here, so the film roll, you will not be able to use the image anymore. You'll, you'll get here a um, skull that shows that the image does not exist anymore. It's good to know that you, well, if you've imported a folder and then you added images to it, these images will not appear automatically in Darktable. However, you can re-import the same folder and it will just add the new images. So if I go here to folder and re-import the same folder that I had, it will add the new images. The old images will not be touched or changed. You could as well use the import image option and select the new images from that folder. It, they will be imported into the same film roll. As well, in the import folder dialog, you have options and these options are import folders recursively, which means that it will go through every uh, folder under the, uh, the uh, parent folder that you selected and it will create a different film roll for every single folder. You can ignore JPEGs, it's the only import row files, and you can apply metadata on, on import. If you wanted to change the metadata on row uh, images that you have by adding different titles or description or adding your name as a creator, anything that wasn't added automatically by the, by the um, camera or anything that you want to change subsequently. It bears repeating that if you import a folder or an image, Darktable does not copy it. It is still in the original folder. So be careful. If you delete anything from, your, from the folder that you imported, it will disappear even from Darktable. Table supports a variety of formats, including a wide range of RAW formats from different suppliers, camera suppliers, and uh, JPEG um, and HDR formats. A extensive list can be found on their website if you need it. In the left pane, you have a uh, option to view your uh, image collection according to different criteria. The default one, it's the one that we've seen until now, is film roll. You could as well look through the physical folders, the file name, the camera, the lens, and notice that if you have multiple options here, if you double click on one, you, it, you will only see the photos that were that correspond to that option. So in this case, the lens. That would have worked as well for the camera. And so on and so forth. You've got uh, the aperture and a whole list of EXIF data that you could select a according to. You could as well have the tags. If you added some tags, we'll go through that at another time. The color label, if you remember, which is those five colors here that you could have, that you could add as attributes. And the title and description, if you've added those or if they are already in the EXIF data and a whole list of other options. You can as well search using this field here and whatever attribute that you've selected. So uh, if we, for instance, go back to the lens and suppose I want to look for the 1124, if I start typing, you can see that it's dynamically, it searches through the attribute for whatever, whatever I was looking for. 
search function is actually quite powerful. It supports uh, wild characters. Uh, you can use compar comparisons such as greater than, less than, or equal to search through dates. Uh, you can even uh, combine multiple searches using and or or to form really powerful um, search criteria. Now, the second panel to look at is the recently used collections. And it has the last things that you've looked through. If you uh, go through uh, Lens, for instance, and I select a single one, then I can see that in my recently used. If I uh, go to another view, and I want to come back to that one, you can just click on it and it will take you back to it. The bottom pane is the timeline. It shows you the dates of the images that you have in your uh, collection. You can use Control plus mouse wheel to actually zoom in and out on the timeline. You can as well select date range in the timeline using your mouse and you will see only the images in that time range. And as well, the collect images view, uh, pane will take you directly to the date time taken selection. The top pane provides another way of sorting your uh, photos. You can either view them according to their star rating or, and you can sort them according to multiple uh, uh, criteria, such as file, na file name, time, rating, ID, etc. And you can change the sort order by pressing the triangle next to it. You can as well group your images together. Uh, suppose I want to group the first three together. I'll go to the selected images and press group. Now, as you can see, there is a yellow outline around them. That means that they're a single group. And if I click on that button up here, which is Collapse Grouped Images, the group will become a single image here. This is handy if you're collecting images according to their theme or subject or uh, any other criteria, and you don't want to see them all in one go. Um, Darktable does that automatically if you actually import um, files from a camera that creates RAW and JPEGs with the same name. So this, the RAW and JPEG with the same name will become a single group. It does that as well uh, automatically uh, for uh, duplicate images if you created the duplicate through Darktable. To ungroup images, you can either click on a single one and press ungroup, and that takes that single image out of the group, or you can select all of the images in the group and press ungroup, and that deletes the group com uh, completely. Note that uh, operations on a group applies to all the images in that group. So if I select those three again and group them, see now they are grouped. If I now in the group view apply five star, it applies the five to three images. If I go back and apply one star, it applies one star to three images. You could as well expand and uh, contract uh, groups individually in the group mode. Let's test that. We'll uh, create another group and then We'll, use, we'll group them to the group mode to group them all together. I'm going to as well change the overlays to uh, permanent extended overlays. And see, I can see here the group button over them. If I click on it, it will expand that group. Notice that if I expand another group, the first group will be closed because you can only have one group extend, expanded at the same time, unless you expand all of them together. This is really helpful if you're just working on, on groups. But as well, what you can see here is that the main thumbnail is chosen automatically, but you can change that. If you go over a single one and click on it, this one will become the thumbnail of the group. And now suppose we close them again, expand and close and see, the new one is this, the new thumbnail. Let's ungroup all of those. And next, we'll talk about sidecar files. What are sidecar files? 
as we've already mentioned, dark table is a non-destructive editor. That means that the original raw file, or actually any file that you're uh, modifying with dark table, remains the same. It's never changed. What's changed is a small file called a sidecar, which is an XMP file that's uh, saved in the same location as your uh, uh, image. And in that file, you have the history stack. Uh, when you first import an image into Darktable, a uh, sidecar file or XMP file is created with the default settings for that image. That means as well that if you, cre if you create a duplicate here, so now suppose I'll, I'll take this one and create a duplicate, you'll see that there are two files, well, two photos, but actually there is a single row file still in my on my hard disk with two XMP or sidecar files. This saves a lot of space and allows you to make different modifications on the same file for different usage or to compare different treatments. Darktable is also capable of importing data from sidecar uh, files created by other applications. When you first import an image, uh, Darktable checks if there is a supported sidecar file associated with that image and imports the supported data from it for a list of all supported formats and uh, the data that can be imported from it. Please refer to the Darktable website. If you store your uh, photos on a uh, NAS uh, network attached storage or on an external hard disk, for example, it might be uh, slow to work on them uh, directly on that medium. Or if you, you might want to have a copy, local copy on your uh, laptop if you were going to work on those images on a, on a different location, you could do that by using the copy locally uh, option here. Uh, that would create a, a local copy of that image in an XMP file. If you work on that separately, uh, after re when you reconnect your uh, hard disk or NAS, you could resync local copy, and that will copy the uh, XMP file that with the latest history stack back to the uh, NAS or uh, hard disk, and it will delete the local copy. Light table supports as well uh, undo and redo uh, using the same uh, shortcuts as most other software, which is Control Z, Control Y. So uh, if we, for instance, uh, change the star rating of an image, Control Z would undo that change, and Control Y would redo it. Let's go through the, the remaining buttons in the selected images menu. You've got remove and trash. Uh, remove would just remove the image from the collection. It will not touch the raw file. Trash would actually delete the file from your hard disk. There, it depends on your setting, which would go. We would go through the preferences on a later date. But you could set it up to either completely delete the file or move it to a trash folder. Move would move the images from one folder to the other. Copy would copy the images from one folder to the other. Create HDR would, cre would create a high dynamic range image from a set of photos. Uh, we've already gone through duplicate. Those are used to rotate the image or to reset the rotation completely to the original. Copy locally and re resync uh, local copy we've just discussed and group and group and ungroup as well. Next is the history stack menu, which, as the title says, it works on the history stack of the images. You could copy those and paste them on another on another image. The buttons are copy, which prompts you to select which settings or from your history stack or which steps from your history stack you would want to copy. Copy all, which would copy the whole history stack. And then you could paste or paste all, which does the same. Paste prompts you what to paste and paste all would paste the whole history stack on the new images. The mode is either append or overwrite. In an overwrite mode, the his new history stack will overwrite the previous history stack of the uh, of the images that, to which you have copied. In append, it's only the difference that would be appended. So, so if, if uh, one image has uh, one extra module uh, um, 
applied to it, then if you copy the history stack of that image and paste it in an append mode on a different one, only that extra module will be pasted. Uh, you could as well load sidecar files and write sidecar card files uh, if you if you don't have uh, automatic uh, generation of uh, sidecar files uh, enabled, then you might have to do that manually. The next menu is styles. Styles are a convenient way of storing history stacks and applying them to f to other images. You can create a style from an image by using the create button and it will prompt you to which uh, modules to uh, use to create a new style plus a name and a description press save there you go now we have it and we can use it to actually apply to a new to another image uh, the other buttons are you can edit it to change whatever uh, modules you want or you can remove it, you can import it and you can export it. Next is the meta editor, uh, metadata editor. As the name suggests, it allows you to edit the metadata of the image. Next we have the tagging menu which allows us to create tags and attach them to images. Say, for instance, that water, say new. Now we have water. Well, I was selected the wrong one, but I could use this one as well and attach it to it. Notice that you have here a list of all the tags that you've ever used. So if I had here lighthouse as well, I would have the option to use the same tags to all the images in my collection. I could as well uh, export the list of tags or import them if you have a list of uh, keywords um, somewhere. Next is the geotagging menu, which allows you to attach a geographical location to your uh, images. And you can uh, do that uh, using a GPS track file that uh, you would have had to generate using a GPS device or your mobile phone. Last but certainly not least is the export selected menu. First is the target storage option. The most used would be file on disk, which will just create a file on your hard disk. But you've got as well other options that we won't go into details now but including send as email and a website gallery. Each of those options will will give you different um, options under it. On file and disk, you'll have to select the file name. An important option is what to do on conflict. The default is to create a unique file name, but you could as well overwrite or skip. File formats are the usual suspects and every file format has its different options. The quality, for instance, for JPEG, but if you select PDF, you'll have different kinds of options, including title, paper size, etc. And then you have some global options uh, that you can set to be applied to all images, such as the size and whether you want to upscale it or, um, choose different styles and profiles to apply to your image. This is it for this time. Next time we'll start with Darkroom. As usual, this is all based on the user manual that can be found on Darktable's website and it will you can find it in the description below. See you next time.